In this submenu, we can see our speed selection. So here I can see a readout of all the speeds currently carried out on my machine. Again, this machine is currently stationary, so this is reading as a zero value. And then further down the screen, I can see that of my belt slips. So if I find that I have any belt slip on the system, if any of my CBUS warning messages are popping up because I'm getting belt slip, I can actually have a readout of what's happening in real time. Down the bottom, I can also turn the likes of my slip monitoring system off or on. At the top of the screen, you'll see the learning process for speeds. What this is going to allow us to do is with the machine in the freshening mode, with the high RPMs, I will enable this learning process. The machine is then automatically going to turn all of my speeds up, be that my drum speed, my fan speeds, and all my straw walker speeds to the maximum limit. And this will then let the machine know at what max limit or what values are available when running flat out. It is recommended to do this at least a couple of times a season. Through the various submenus, as I mentioned, we have various freshing mechanism adjustments. We have separation adjustments for our loss sensors. So if I would like to adjust the sensitivity of my loss sensors, so or that of my walkers, I find maybe that they're activating too frequently, especially in that of smaller crops like oilseed rape. Then I can go in and turn the sensitivity either up or I can turn the sensitivity down. Again, this is also available from the main home screen where I can click on that of the loss monitors and I can see my available sensitivities here on the right hand side. This works the exact same way as well for the likes of our loss sensors for our cleaning system. So as our CIV loss sensors, we can see here our sensitivities for those two. And again, we also have various sensitivities for that of our return system. So if our machine is fitted with the likes of a grain meter or a volume limit, we can then set the sensitivity of our returns limitations. Here we can see the selection for our sieve. So depending on the way or the sieve that we have specified from our dealer, this will depend on the various sieve we have available. So for example, the machine I have here in the workshop is fitted with a TM6 Frogmouse sieve. This sieve tends to work a lot wider than that of a normal sieve. So I need to make sure that my CBUS is aware of what sieve I have available to myself so that my CBUS settings are correct. If you find that your sieves are not reacting to when you open and close them accordingly, do make sure that your sieve has been listed correctly. And finally, we have the learning for our sieve end stops. So here we can learn the end stops for the sieve at its widest most position and at its narrowest most position. Our returns volume limit also is important to relearn if we have retention that of our returns elevator. This lets our CBUS know that it has returned back to its empty and zero position. So at the rear of the machine, we also have the spreader system selection. Here we can see at the top that we have the offset for that of the spreader system. So if we find that we need to offset the spreader itself more so to the left of the machine than to the right of the machine, we can offset this value accordingly. Please do note that the zero value is the normal natural position. We also have the mirroring button, so when we come to turn on the likes of the headland, we can also ensure that the chuff or the spreader system has been positioned the correct way. Below, you can also see the distribution system for the chopper itself. So if we find that in certain crops our chaff spreader or our main spreader is overthrowing into standing crop, we can reduce this value. Or vice versa, if we find that our chopper system is not spreading it to the full width of our cutter bar, we can then increase this value. If our machine has also been fitted with the automatic crosswind compensation flaps, then we will see these flaps at the rear of the machine on the light stalks. The way these flaps work is that if we have a crosswind or on a side lateral hill, the system itself is going to recognize this and is going to offset the spreader accordingly. So for example, if I have a crosswind coming from the right, the chopper system is going to know that it needs to throw more crop into the wind to get that full level. I can turn this system on or off via the button here, and to adjust the sensitivity of this sensor, I can turn it up and down accordingly here. 
We also then have the option to adjust the distribution system from either the cab or the rear of the machine. In a separate video, I've shown you how to adjust the system from the rear of the machine, but predominantly, as a customer, we'll use it from inside the cab. To adjust this, I can click on my distribution system selection, and I can choose one of three modes, be that the road travel mode, where the chopper is in its utmost position for the road, be it in the chopping position, or in the swapping position when I want to lay a swap. I need to make sure that my main threshing system is disengaged before I adjust my distribution system. Otherwise, you will see this column here blanked out. I then have to wait for my chopper system or my threshing system to run down before I can make the adjustment. I can also learn the end stops of the positioning for the travel of the distribution system. In my green delivery section, I will either have one or two options. Depending on the unloading system I have on my machine, I will have the smaller 110 or 130 liters a second system. Or if I have one of the larger hybrid or larger straw walker machines, I may have the 180 liter a second system. Now with the 180 liter a second system, I have the option to half rate my unloading speed on the go. So by the press of a button by either this main screen here or the side button down to the right hand side, I can shut one of the cross augers off in the main tank itself, which is gonna go from two cross augers to one cross auger, therefore half rating my unloading speed. It's important to note that I can't then reload the second speed back up whilst my unloading is enabled. I have to turn the unloading system off before I can re-able the second cross auger. I then also have this additional button on the right hand side for maintenance of the auger. This button is green and it's enabled. When I turn my unloading system on, all it is going to do is allow me to unload the main tube itself without the cross augers in the tank. This lets us clear any debris that may be of that in the main auger. I need to make sure that this is obviously turned off for field use. And finally, in my machine settings, I can have a menu for performance optimization. This is a very quick and easy guide to any issues I may be having in the field. So for example, if I'm an operator and I'm a bit worried about the grain quality in my grain tank, I can click on this recommended menu and the CBUS menu is gonna give me some recommendations of the adjustments I can make as an operator. These are not made automatically, I then have to manually make these adjustments as we're going along.